The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of Paltalk.com, AVM software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Paltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users, on demand on iTunes and on YouTube, and on my blog, which is sizzling with comments today, GaryBombgarden.com. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, where it's syndicated into 12 million additional households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. As you can see on my right, your left, there is an empty seat. It's the hot seat for David Turnley, who's going to be joining us hopefully in just a few minutes. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, and he spent a goodly portion of his career chronicling the life of Nelson Mandela and has put together this beautiful coffee top book with uh, images and words called Mandela Struggle and Triumph. And anything you ever wanted to know about Nelson Mandela, you will uh, hear about right here uh, on that book. Uh, about Read about it in the book and hear when uh, David Turnley joins us here. While we're waiting for David, though, oh, my God, what a hot button. You know, sometimes you write about things on the blog, and it just kind of goes out into the Ethernet. There's no commentary. There are eight comments to something that I wrote today. Eight comments. Uh, let me read what I wrote in the blog. Then I want to go over a couple of the comments and hear what you have to say about that while we're waiting for David to join us. Not only is Iran defying the United Nations and the international community by continuing its program to enrich uranium, most probably an attempt to develop the bomb, but it is now threatening to cut off one of the most important oil pipelines in the world. If Tehran makes good on its threat to cut off the Strait of Hormuz, it will force many nations to look at Iran through another set of strategic eyes because the flow of oil has become a national security issue in many countries. Iran believes it has the naval power to shut down the strait. Well, let me hark back to the capturing of British soldiers and Marines patrolling the Persian Gulf. And I uh, recount how uh, two British Royal Navy patrol boats were seized by Iran along with their crew. Diplomacy resulted in their safe release. But at the time, I said, and I was like a lone wolf crying out in the woods with nobody to hear, that what Tony Blair, the then Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Kingdom ought to have done was say, look, you got 24 hours to release them. If you don't, we're going to take out one of your naval ships using a cruise missile. Give them another 24 hours, take out another one. Another 24 hours, take out another one until they are released. If they had done that, the Iranians wouldn't be threatening to shut down the Strait of Hormuz. Well, anyway, I wrote this today, maybe a bit provocatively, I agree, about even the comments in support and against my point of view. Uh, anonymous. The Iranians tried to seize an Australian vessel, too. The Aussies, in true Aussie style, told them to bugger off. Maybe the Brits should so, show more chutzpah and less political correctness at times. I think as a Brit, I'm allowed to say this. Pretty long posting by that person. They ought to hold Iran in check. Ah, here's somebody uh, saying in response to that, you're all a bunch of warmongers. Iran has the right to control the strait. It is an internal Iranian matter. What right have the British or the United States or anyone else to tell Iran what to do with its own territory? A response to that, the Iranians do not have the right to control international waters. Even the UN wouldn't tolerate that. As for being warmongers, what a ludicrous statement. Iran has invaded other nations' territorial waters. It has committed acts of piracy. And you all have the unmitigated gall to call us warmongers. Another comment, well, the same goes for the United States and Great Britain then. The, what right have they to control the Persian Gulf? Uh, another response, if the Iranians are not developing nuclear weapons, then why aren't they giving the IAEA free and unfettered access? Another response, these apologists for Iran make me sick. They sound like 
the apologists for Hitler and the Nazis. These are just the tops of pretty long postings by people. From my perspective, it's a no-brainer. Uh, Iran is developing nuclear weapons, or they allow the IAEA in there. They have threatened to uh, wipe Israel off the map. It should not be an issue. I don't understand. Somebody explain your position if you disagree with me on this. Why anybody would be in support of what Tehran is doing. Scott in Canada. Scott, welcome to News Talk Online on paltalk.com. Well, we have to remember that um, the United States maintains a territorial water boundary around itself of 200 miles. But when it comes to places like Canada, where they share water courses that aren't 200 miles wide, they have that line going straight down the middle. So really, they can't really dictate what the United Arab Emirates does with their water course, which is in that same strait. So, you know, the United Arab Emirates should have half of that strait, and Iran the other half, and to, for Iran to suggest that it owns all of it is actually violating the integrity of the sovereign borders of other nations. That would be my comment. So Iran does not have the right to control the Strait of Hormuz? Is that what you're saying? Yes, of course not. That would be kind of like saying that Canada has the right to control Lake Superior you know, or any of the Great Lakes, like all the water in the Great Lakes would be controlled by Canada. That's simply not the case, you know. Hey, as a, hey, 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 careful there, as a Michigan native, them are fighting words. That's right, <laughs> so they're fighting words. <laughs> Let's go to Don in Chicago. Don, welcome to News Talk Online on PellTalk.com. Yeah, Gary, I think the uh, Canadians should take over the St. Clair River myself and... Uh... Uh, start charging taxes to all the uh, the Americans that want to go tubing in it. I don't guess that'd raise much money though. Yeah, yeah uh, but if they take it over, then they have to take over the uh, cleanup of the pollution that the Americans have put in there. Excellent yeah. idea. Yeah, of course the Canadians haven't put any pollution in there either. As I recall, uh, the Canadian site is wall-to-wall -wall chemical plants. So you know, you you be the judge. Um, you know, Iran.